we bid you welcome on this Sunday morning, October the 25th. This is the 33rd Sunday we have gathered virtually in the 10 o'clock hour. So whether you are joining us here in this moment in the 10 o'clock hour or if you're worshiping with us at some other time at your convenience, we welcome you and we're thrilled to have you with us uh, here this morning. I'm Randy Lucas. I'm the pastor of the church and I'm joined here in the Faith and Fellowship Center this morning uh, by Christine Murphy, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. You'll hear from Christine a little later on this morning. Mike Murphy, who continues to be our stellar producer. We appreciate, Mike, all these weeks uh, that we have been doing this particular service. Uh, we also have with us this morning Les Scott, who is our Minister of Music. Bailey Baker, once again, is with us uh, for some singing, and we look forward to that and uh, just are delighted to have Bailey with us this morning. Susan Clearman at the piano. Again, we look forward to hearing from Susan. And we also have Gary Clark and Elizabeth Gordon with us this morning who are working with Mike today. So we're glad to have all those folks here, and we're glad to have you there at home or wherever you may be watching. I mentioned this is the 33rd uh, Sunday that we have gathered for this worship at 10 o'clock. This is the final Sunday for this 10 o'clock virtual worship service because we are beginning next week a phased-in approach to returning to indoor worship. Now, it'll be different. We'll be having uh, safety protocols in place, and stay tuned this week for our HUMC news, and also you can check our uh, website for information regarding that. But we will uh, be working very diligently to make it safe and to be very careful, and it will be a different worship experience than you had when you left in March, but uh, we uh, hope that it will be meaningful for all of us to start getting back together in some form or fashion. So we very much look forward to that, and we covet your prayers as church leadership continues to try to develop those protocols and procedures that we will have in place. But we look very much forward to that. We will be live streaming our services, continuing to do that. We will live stream our 909 service, which will take place here in this facility, and our 1050 worship service in the church sanctuary. It will be important that we have sign-ups. It helps us in the check-in process. And so again, I invite you to check with our uh, HUMC News, which comes out Tuesday, and our church website on Tuesday. That information will become available. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at the church office. But we are excited about this transition, and we have been blessed to be able to spend this time together in this 10 o'clock virtual service, kind of splitting the difference between our early and our later worship services. With that being said, I would invite you to go ahead if you would like to add a name for our prayer list that uh, Christine will offer during the pastoral prayer in a few minutes. In the comment section to Facebook, if you're with us in this live 10 o'clock hour on the Sunday morning, you can go ahead and put those requests. We just really need names at this point, but if Christine gets them in time, she'll be glad to lift those up. So we'd invite you to go ahead and engage in that now. With that word of welcome, a brief word of instruction, I invite you to join with me as we begin our time together in prayer. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the technology that has enabled us to worship together in this virtual space uh, over these past weeks. I'm grateful for this uh, next stage, this next step of beginning to come in in a phased-in return to indoor worship. We're excited about that. We pray that you'd help us to be diligent and that you'd help us to be faithful and that you'd help us to keep one another safe. And grateful that we continue to live stream, have those capabilities for our 909 and 1050 services. So we are grateful for all of that. And we pray that you would be with us now in this moment. And we pray that you would be high and lifted up, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth faithfully, and that you would be pleased at our attempts to worship you in this time, in this moment, in this space, virtually though it is. And we give you thanks for the gift of that. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join us there at home and let us sing together just over in Glory Land. Our band will lead us this morning.
say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as we begin our time of prayer this morning, we will take a few minutes to settle our hearts and our minds as Susan plays for us.
Let us pray. Merciful God, it isn't easy for us to follow the commandments of loving. Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God and to love our neighbors. But we have allowed misunderstanding, fear, hatred, and prejudice to cloud our spirits, turning them away from those who need our love. We place a test before you, asking that you prove your love to us, or we threaten not to believe in you. Please forgive us for this foolishness and stubbornness. Give us the courage to be people who will care for others. Let us dedicate our lives in your service, always aware of your awesome love for us. Gracious God, we seek your peace and healing love. Our hearts are filled with concern for our families and friends, as well as those in far-off lands who face times of difficulties, illness, or mourning. We bring to you this morning the names of those for whom we seek prayers, knowing that you hear our cries and respond in love. Today we especially pray for Artis, Wilma, Madeline, Marilyn, Jill, Peter, Agnes, Jeff, Kenneth, Tommy, Susan, Greg, Maxie, Thomas, Friends Battling COVID, Savannah, Randall, Craig, Lynn, Ann, Judy, Missy, Rinda, and Sarah. Be with each of us, O Lord. Heal our wounds, direct our lives in pathways of peace this week. These things we offer in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against against us. And let us lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Christine. We enter into our time of joys now, and we are grateful for the opportunity to celebrate anniversaries and birthdays. Uh, You see the folks who are celebrating anniversaries coming up this week, so we wish them a happy anniversary, and we have uh, many uh, birthdays coming up this week. We have some actually today, Gordon Jolly, Philip Murphy, and Dabs Potts. I guess that's your Philip, right? Yeah, and John's birthday's in three three days. Oh, very good. So uh, celebrating a lot at the Murphy household in the coming days. Happy birthday to everybody celebrating uh, birthdays coming up uh, today and uh, throughout this coming week. You know, we're really appreciative of uh, all of you who have been sending in uh, pictures, and we even had selfie videos there for a while. We enjoyed those. But these pictures have really added so much to our virtual worship experience. Grateful for this lovely picture here uh, that was given to us by uh, Lewis and Mary Alice uh, Collins. Look at that beautiful autumn picture there with that uh, red truck and those pumpkins and bales of hay, and good-looking couple there also. So we're grateful they shared that with us. Don Germano sent us a couple of pictures with a a, a cool caption. You you see the wise owl and you see the American flag. And I think Don's caption in his email was something to the effect of be wise, vote. So that's a good word for all of us, Don. Thank you for that. And thanks to everybody who have sent uh, pictures uh, over these last uh, 33 weeks. We have enjoyed very much your sharing your joys with us in this virtual space. We continue to collect items for hurricane relief over at the fire department. If you have questions about that, see Christy Lewis, who is our uh, chair of the ministries team, and she'll be glad to give you some guidance on that. Uh, Would remind you that we've been doing uh, some outdoor events, morning prayers, front lawn chats have been available. We're going to actually bring those to a close this week as we end October and as we prepare for coming back inside for worship for our 909 and 1050 services. But if you would like to join us this week, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday at 9 o'clock on the front lawn of the church, just a brief time of prayer, and sometimes we have music uh, with Les there, and it's just just kind of a holy few moments. And front lawn chats, if you'd like to come and bring your chair and just sit and chat for a little bit, let me know this week, and I'd be happy to meet with you and just spend a little visiting time. Uh, But that'll wrap up at the end of October. Starting November 1st, next Sunday, 
we do return to our 909 and 1050 services. Again, we will be uh, very intentional about uh, living into the protocols. Uh, our seating will be different. It'll be limited. Again, sign-ups will be very helpful. We will have overflow capabilities if we reach our maximum number that we can uh, effectively social distance in both of those spaces. We'll be able to have an overflow with a streaming of the services in the old fellowship building. So I believe we'll be able to accommodate everyone who would like to come and join us. Please remember, uh, we will continue to live stream these services so you can continue. Uh, if you would rather stay home and worship with us virtually, you will continue to have that option. And again, be on the lookout for the HUMC news, which comes out via email on Tuesdays. If you do not get our HUMC news, please call, please call the church office. Let me know, let Sonia know, and we'll certainly get you on that. We send that out every week, and it has a lot of good information for our church family. You can also, of course, check our website. We'll have updated information on Tuesday regarding our service of worship beginning next Sunday, November the 1st. We move into a time of giving. You know, we, as all churches, I suspect, have experienced a bit of a financial crunch in this season. We've been very fortunate here with the generosity of the folks who continue to support the life and ministry of this church. Uh, our giving certainly has not been what it would have been in a normal year, and I think every church could probably say that. Uh, so I want to say a special word of thanks to you, those of you who continue to support the work of this church. You can give in a variety of ways. People mail checks in. They bring checks to the front porch and leave them uh, in our little black mailbox there. Uh, we, you can also give online. It's a very easy process. In fact, we'll move into a virtual time of offering right now. You can go to our website and you'll be guided very easily. It's a very short process. In fact, I'm going to step over right now and go to my laptop and give my, uh, our morning offering for Kathy and me. Uh, and I would invite you to do the same if you give online as we enjoy some music now uh, from the band as we give our morning offering. <laughs> Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the many gifts you bestow upon us. We thank you for the gifts of time and talent and treasure. And we thank you for the financial gifts that you have blessed us with and that you allow us to return for the work of your church, the upbuilding of your kingdom. So we pray your blessing upon the gift and the giver and pray a, a special prayer of thanks for all the many ways we have been blessed and touched by your extravagant generosity 
in every area of our life. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We'll look to Les and Susan and Bailey now for this morning's anthem. One of the blessings of this uh, strange season for us has been the opportunity to have Bailey with us on a much more regular basis, and we have been blessed by you, Bailey. Thank you. Thank you for that this morning, uh, Bailey and Susan. Our scripture lesson for today comes from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, They gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourselves. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So tonight we're wrapping up uh, our Disciple Bible Study 4. Uh, we uh, have been meeting virtually for most of these 32 weeks. This is the 32nd and final session tonight. Uh, and it's been a good study. We, we spent the last several weeks before tonight's study studying the book of Revelation. Now, the book of Revelation is a fascinating book, this uh, amazing apocalyptic writing that was written to the churches of Asia Minor in the first century who were undergoing persecution. And it was a word to the church to hang on, to remain faithful, to uh, continue to be faithful to God even as uh, they found themselves in difficult times. So it is a marvelous book, but it's filled with all kinds of strange images, and there are a variety of ways that people over the years have interpreted the book of Revelation. You know, there are all kinds of ways that people come to faith, the Christian faith. There are a variety of ways that we can interpret a number of biblical passages. The, the book of Revelation is really a good example of that. You know, you can get yourself into real trouble talking about faith, religion, or politics around the Thanksgiving dinner table. So, you know, we've been warned over the years to kind of stay away from those subjects because we don't all agree. There are plenty of Christian denominations, and so we have very different practices. We have some central core beliefs that we all hold, but we have different views around hot-button social issues, and we have different ways to interpret the Scripture so it can be confusing, and I suspect there have been times where maybe you have even felt a bit intimidated by the Scripture. I mean, spend some time in Leviticus or spend some time in the book of Revelation if you really want to get in the weeds and find yourself struggling. But faith is not always easy, and there can be a lot of different concepts that are hard for us to grasp. And again, you won't find complete agreement among Christians about a lot of different ways to interpret the Scripture. And that's why today's text, I think, is so compelling, because it really is simple. Jesus takes what can be very complex and really moves it into very understandable terms for us. Uh, you heard the story when uh, the uh, Pharisees have heard that he has... Uh, answered correctly, or not correctly so much, but he has answered in a way that has made the Sadducees quiet when they had come and asked him questions about, uh, about resurrection. And so Jesus, obviously his reply was correct. His reply was such that it just kind of shut them up. And so the Pharisees thought they would give it another shot, and a lawyer asked the question, teacher, trying to test him, which commandment is the greatest? And you heard Jesus reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we get the context of where this story is, Jesus has already made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He's run out the money changers. He's already been dealing in a very confrontational manner with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders. They've been trying to trip him up and to test him. He's told some parables that have been really quite uh, confrontational to those religious leaders. And and so after Jesus gives the, these two great commandments, uh, he asks a question of them. You heard the question, what about the son of David? Is he the son of David? Is he the Lord? How do you understand the Messiah? You heard the question, nobody could give the right answer, and they knew no matter how they answered it would be confusing. And so that was an end to the gotcha questions for Jesus. I really want to focus, though, on the first part of our reading today, the two commandments, because I think that is just 
good to dwell on and to focus on and to reflect on for a few moments. You may recall back earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, in the fifth chapter of Matthew, when Jesus has offered the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about how he hasn't come to abolish or get rid of the law and the prophets. He makes it really quite clear. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus is making it very clear that that he is a fulfillment of all that has come before. He is the embodiment of God's salvation for Israel and for for all of the world. And so when Jesus offers these words, he is making it clear as he's making his way to the cross that at the heart of what it means to be in relationship with God is to be in relationship with Christ and to be in relationship with your neighbor. At the heart of it all is love. It is the message of the cross. It is the message of God's redeeming work in Christ. When Jesus answers the question that was posed to him by the lawyer, he, he pulls from what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. And he goes back to the book of Deuteronomy and offers the Shema. Shema is Hebrew for here. And in the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, we have this teaching, hear, Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Faith begins with our right response to the God who has created us in God's image, the God who has made for us a way of salvation, a way when there was no other way, the God who loves us and cares for us, the God who delivers us, Everything begins with our desire to love and to be obedient and faithful to the God who calls us. And Jesus says, this is the great, greatest commandment. Love your God with all of your heart and soul and mind. And then he follows it up, once again, borrowing from our Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. A second is like unto it. And right here in the midst of the book of Leviticus, we have this teaching about how we are to act within the community, how we are to care for one another. You hear these words from Leviticus 19.18, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Love of God and love of neighbor. You know, it can be complicated, faith. Biblical interpretation can be confusing. We can disagree on what the beast that rises out of the sea in the book of Revelation chapter 13. We can disagree on what that beast symbolizes. We can have different understandings about different bits of Scripture. But this, we get this. (laughs) At the heart of what it means to be faithful to God, love of God and love of neighbor. And Jesus makes it very clear in yoking these two together that these are inseparable in Christ. We hear this fundamental teaching that love of God and love of neighbor are bound forever together. We can't be in right relationship with God if we are not willing to be in right relationship with our neighbor. And we don't really love God if we don't love our neighbor. It's a good thing to be reminded of from time to time because in in difficult times, in contentious times, in polarizing times, it's... It's easy to forget the core beliefs, the fundamental truths of our faith. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that lawyer asked that question to try to test Jesus. I'm glad that we can hear again this central teaching of our faith, that the greatest commandment, the heart of it all, is love God and love one another. It was at the heart of John Wesley's teaching. Wesley had... Uh, what was a somewhat controversial doctrine in his day. And for some folks, it's a little bit controversial today. But, but at the heart of Wesley's doctrine of Christian perfection was simply this teaching. Wesley understood that to be perfected in love, to, to be blessed with God's grace in a sanctifying way, to be brought to holiness and righteousness, was really nothing higher and nothing lower than this the pure love of God and man, the loving of God with all our heart and soul and our neighbor as ourselves. It is love governing the heart and life, running through all tempers, words, and actions. It really is a very simple teaching. It really is a 
a teaching that we would all do well to recall and, and to try to live into. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans offers a, a similar word that I think is worthy of recalling today. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You know, as we've tried to navigate this time as church leadership, we have tried to be, and I believe we have been governed by the law of love. We've thought in terms of how can we care for one another, how can we, how can we take care of one another, and, and we will continue to be guided by that fundamental principle at the heart of, of the Christian faith. You know, I'm, I'm mindful that I really haven't told you anything you don't already know today. I'm in my third decade of preaching in front of folks. And I've come to believe over the years that I don't tell people a lot of stuff they don't already know. I've come to believe that maybe a big part of what I do when I stand up to preach is just to remind people of things that sometimes we can easily forget. 2020 has been a bear, hasn't it? And it's not over yet. We've still got a ways to go, and we've still got struggles and challenges. We're in the midst of this global pandemic. We're heading into the fall, and we know the concerns around that, fall and winter. We're in the midst of a very polarizing political presidential campaign. We understand the reality of all that. And it's really easy in times of high anxiety, in times of stress, bombarded by all the images on television or in our mailbox or in our email inbox or our telephone, wherever you're getting messages, I'm sure you're like me and you're getting inundated with all these messages uh, related to this political season right now. But as we find ourselves in the midst of troubling times, it's really easy if we're not careful to forget the basic things that lie at the heart of who we are called to be. It's really easy to demonize people who think differently than us. It's really different. It's, diff it's, it's really easy to, to dismiss others. Uh, it, it really becomes very critically important, I think, in times like this, when it's easy to forget who we are, to occasionally be reminded who we are and who we're called to be. And I'm so grateful for Jesus' teaching this morning. We can argue around the periphery of biblical interpretation and what's God's mind and will and hot-button issues, and we can disagree on uh, how God wants the election to turn out. We can disagree on all of those kinds of things. We can have different views. We are shaped by a compilation of the voices and the experiences that have come to help us think the way we think today. But it's good in the midst of all of that to come back to the center, the center of this teaching, the main thing, if you will. The main thing is love. I like what someone once said, the main thing is to be sure to keep the main thing the main thing. And beloved, I've simply come today to remind you of what you already know. In this season of challenge, the world needs the church to be the church. And at the center of what it means to be the church is living into the fulfillment of the law and the prophets that Jesus has taught us as he has embodied the love of God and the love of others. And I would suggest to you today and I would offer you a truth that I know you can agree with 100%, whatever your theological or political persuasion might be. Now, before, and in the future, the main thing has always and will always be love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Join us, will you, as we sing the gift of love.
striving soul. My love profess, but be not given by love within the prophets who turn strangely Spirit, calm our hearts, control our spirits, love to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed by this. Thank you, Les and Susan and Bailey. Would you join us now as the band leads us in I'll Fly Away. We want to say a special word of thanks to all of you for joining us in worship. And as you've been with us during these 33 weeks when we've had this 10 o'clock virtual worship service, uh, we appreciate you so much. I appreciate uh, the worship team here uh, who have been so diligent and faithful in trying to, uh, to do our best in uh, sharing with you a worship service that you could participate in and be a part of. I want to say a special word of thanks to Mike Murphy. Mike has made these services possible and has put in a lot of hours and a lot of time. So Special word of thanks to Mike Murphy for his faithfulness, especially during this season. Would you look to me now for your benediction this morning? Would you go forth in peace? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.